Hey guys, this is Charles Jager with Metal. In this quick tutorial, we're going to take a look at the Chrome Spheres effect that's a part of Mantra VR. Mantra VR is a comprehensive set of stylization effects designed to take your cinematic 360 VR production to the next level. The effects are built to work on spherical footage in After Effects and Premiere Pro, and they were created by the same developers at Metal who created the Skybox 360 VR plugins. Let's go ahead and jump into After Effects and look at one of the effects included with Mantra VR, the Chrome Spheres effect. All right, now we're inside of After Effects. I have some 360 footage of Venice here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select my footage, come up here to Effect, come down here to Metal, and then Mantra VR Chrome Spheres. Immediately, we're gonna see eight different Chrome Spheres applied to our 360 footage. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see the detail. And it's really nice because we have reflections of the other spheres actually on each of the individual spheres. So you get kind of this inception-like effect happening. You can see I'm now zoomed into 100%. Uh, and this is 4K footage, so you can see there's quite a bit of detail in there. Let's take a look at the various effects options we have in the effects panel here. The first one is the frame layout, where we can select from monoscopic or stereoscopic footage. Quite a few of the metal effects now work on both monoscopic and stereoscopic, so it's nice to have that option. The next setting is the point of interest, and you can see we have this little crosshairs here in the middle of the effect. I can go ahead and select that, and you can see I can move it around. And this is viewing at full resolution on 4K footage, and you can see this effect is quite responsive, and these effects work really quickly. So you can see how quick that's responding to when we move everything around with all the reflections that it's calculating. If I zoom in here, you can see the reflections actually are updating for each of the spheres. So it's really cool how quickly that's reacting. The next setting we have is the field of view. If you think about a sphere here, it would really be the diameter of the sphere. So if I go ahead and adjust this setting, you can see it shrinks the spheres if we go lower and then we can increase this all the way up to the point to where the spheres actually cross over each other. You can get some nice abstract effects resulting from that. I'll go ahead and set that back to the default of 60. Next we have the curvature and we can go ahead and adjust this now to get different looks on our spheres. If I increase this, you can see it increases the curvature of the actual sphere itself and we get kind of this liquid like effect resulting on each of the spheres. Or we could decrease this and it looks more kind of like a warp effect or it's shrinking in. And again, we can move the point of interest around and get various results. And we can also increase the field of view with those various effects applied to get a lot different results on our footage. So I'll set those back to default. Next we have the reflection recursion level. So if I zoom in here again, we can see the reflection of each of the spheres on our spheres. But if I go ahead and increase this, I'll just zoom in here so you can see this even more. You can see they're not reflected twice over. So I can go ahead and increase that to two. And now you can see even more spheres are reflected in the reflection. So again, it gets kind of like an inception effect. And if you want to really push it, you can bump this all the way up to three. And you can see there's even more reflections there. Conversely, you could dial it all the way down to zero if you don't want to have any reflections in the spheres. I'm going to go ahead and set that back to one. I think that looks pretty good. Next, we have the feather, which is the feather for each of the individual spheres. So I can pull this down to get more of a sharp edge along the side. Or I can increase this. And you can see it's going to kind of feather, give us some nice soft edges on each of the spheres. And what's cool is if we actually look in the reflections, you can see the reflections are also getting the feathered edge as well. So that's a nice option to have. Next, we have the draw background, which is a really nice setting. We can check this off and you can see it's not rendering the background anymore. It's just rendering the actual spheres itself. And one cool kind of use case of this, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna select my footage. I'm gonna hit Control D to duplicate it. And on this bottom copy, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the Chrome Spheres effect. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna apply a blur to it. So I'm gonna come over here to Effect, Metal, and I'm gonna use the Skybox Blur. And I can go ahead and increase the blurriness here. And you can see this gives me kind of like a shallow depth of field look uh, with the spheres. So we have that background there. So I can go ahead and select the spheres, go ahead and move around the point of interest for the spheres. And as you can see, we get kind of a nice shallow depth of field effect occurring. So that's kind of one use case where you would use the draw background effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that second copy and I'm gonna turn the background back on. Reposition this back to the center. The next setting we can adjust is the opacity. So I can go ahead and dial that down from 100% if we want the spheres to kind of be somewhat translucent. And you can see how you can see through the actual sphere. Yeah, we have a little bit of that reflectance still occurring. I should also mention that you can keyframe all these properties that we've looked at so far. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the distribution options for this effect. And quite a few of the Mantra VR effects have this distribution settings option. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle this down and we see another host of settings here that we can adjust. First one is the distribution type. And so this first one we have right now is the octahedron. Pardon my accent there with that. So I'm gonna actually toggle this down. I'm gonna select Fibonacci. 
which is one of the more common mantra settings that is available in the distribution type. And you can see this changes it to be just be one sphere, but what's nice about this now is we can go ahead and add in the number of instances that we want. So let's say I wanted to have more than eight or less than eight, I can go ahead and change that here in the Fibonacci distribution type. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase this. And you can see that adds more spheres into this shot. I wanna set this on 12. And what's really crazy is you can see all the different reflections on each of the spheres in the shot. And if we wanna get really crazy, we can bump up the recursion level to two. And you can see we get kind of this beehive effect of how many different reflections that we have. And I can go ahead and move this around. You can see it's still really responsive, really no lag at all. So that just again shows you that these effects are designed quite well to work with 360 footage very quickly and efficiently. So I'm gonna set that back to one. The next option we have is the latitude. And so you can see where we have the point of interest right now and the latitude's currently set at zero. If I go ahead and increase this to 100%, you can see all the spheres are gonna kind of converge right there at the point of interest. And that's when it's at 100. But if I go ahead and set this down to negative 100, they're gonna converge at the exact opposite point 180 degrees from the point of interest. So you can see I can go ahead and keyframe this around. So that's nice if you need to keyframe the latitude of the spheres animating that kind of thing. Next we have rotate around the point of interest. So again, you can see our point of interest is right there. We can keyframe this to rotate all the spheres around that specific point. Next we have incremental scale. So we can go ahead and adjust this and you can see how the spheres get bigger or smaller depending on where they're located around the point of interest again. So you can see when we bring this to the negative, it's going to shrink the ones that are on the exact opposite side. If we bring it to the positive, it's going to shrink the ones that are around the point of interest. Following that, we have scale deviation, which is going to randomly adjust the scale size of the spheres. And then we have position deviation, which is going to randomly position the spheres. And then, of course, finally, at the end, we have random seed effect to adjust. Just to quickly show you another distribution type, I'm going to set this on circle. And I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the point of interest here down to the very bottom. And you can see we get this ring of spheres. I may adjust the actual number of spheres here to be something lower like eight. And I'll go ahead and shrink the field of view a little bit. So now you can see we have spheres circling around our camera and I can adjust the position by rotating around the point of interest. So now we have the spheres rotating. We could keyframe this and do various options with that. So using these options, you could create some cool animations with keyframes and various other settings. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this overview of the Chrome Spheres effect that's a part of Mantra VR. This has been Charles Jager with Metal. Thanks for watching.